In this video, we'll talk about why Didi could become the next Uber. Didi is one of the world's largest ride-hailing companies with 493 million annual active users and is backed by a prominent set of investors, including Tencent, Alibaba, Apple, and Uber themselves. Didi is set to go public at an estimated valuation between $62 and $67 billion, making it one of the largest international company IPOs on a US stock exchange. Like Uber, Didi's main business is mobility, which includes ride-hailing, taxi-hailing, and other mobility services. Didi offers a variety of ride-hailing services like Uber, which include options such as carpooling, express, and luxury. When it comes to the global recognition of Didi and Uber, Uber is more widely known due to its larger geographic reach in mobility. Uber states that they are the number one mobility services provider in the US, Latin America, Europe, and a number of other major regions around the world. However, one of the largest regions that Uber is not a direct leader in is China, where Didi is the number one mobility services provider with an estimated 90% market share. In fact, Uber sold its China ride-hailing business to Didi in exchange for an ownership stake in 2016. China represents Didi's largest market by far, although the company has expanded to 14 other countries starting in 2018. One of its strongest international positions is Latin America, in which Didi is reported to be the second largest ride-hailing platform in the region. Overall, Didi's international business serves more than 60 million active annual users and accounts for approximately 12% of its annual active users worldwide. Like Uber, Didi is working to introduce additional service offerings on its international ride-hailing platforms such as food delivery. Didi and Uber share a number of similarities with their mobility businesses, which leads many investors to directly compare their financials with each other. But there are a number of major differences between Didi and Uber that are essential to know. At first glance, it looks like Didi's mobility business is much larger than Uber. Didi generated $20.4 billion in sales in 2020 compared to Uber's $6.1 billion in sales. But this is because the two companies have different business models and therefore use different approaches for revenue recognition. While Uber primarily generates its mobility revenue from the fees that it charges on rides delivered by third-party drivers, Didi works with a large amount of taxi-hailing companies in addition to third-party drivers. As a result, Didi recognizes ride-hailing service revenues on a gross basis. In a simplified example, let's assume that both Uber and Didi charge a 20% take rate on a ride transaction. This means that when a rider pays $10 for a ride, both Uber and Didi collect $2 of that $10 as fees, with the remaining $8 going to the driver. However, when it comes to recognizing revenue, when a rider pays $10 to Didi, Didi recognizes that $10 as revenue and marks the $8 paid to the driver as an expense. Meanwhile, when a rider pays Uber $10, Uber only recognizes the $2 in fees that they collect net of the driver's payout as revenues. This is why it looks like Didi generates significantly more revenue compared to Uber when in reality it's not an apples to apples comparison. To better compare the two companies, instead of using Uber's revenue, we can compare Uber's gross bookings with Didi's revenues. For their mobility businesses, in 2020, Uber reported $57.9 billion in gross bookings compared to Didi's $20.4 billion in revenue, highlighting Uber's massive scale in mobility. While both companies generate a significant amount of revenue, they have yet to report sustainable profitability. Both Didi and Uber have lost billions of dollars since they were founded, a large amount of which has gone towards subsidizing rides. Both companies have noted that there is a possibility that they will fail to achieve or maintain profitability in the future. To improve its business economics, Didi has stated that they are investing heavily into new technologies such as electric vehicles. While Uber has pledged to convert its entire ride-hailing fleet to go all-electric by 2030, Didi appears to be more proactive in its move to electric vehicles. Electric vehicles help improve the economics of shared mobility by lowering operating and maintenance costs. Didi makes it easier for drivers to own and maintain electric vehicles by helping drivers to lease them through their partners and providing the drivers with nationwide support services. In 2020, Didi reported to have the world's largest network of electric vehicles on its platform with over 1 million electric vehicles registered. And to support this fleet, Didi built one of the largest domestic electric vehicle charging networks, with an estimated 30% market share based on total public charging volume. 
In addition to its charging network, Didi also developed the world's first electric vehicle designed specifically for shared mobility, the D1. Didi launched the D1 in November 2020 with about 1,000 vehicles operating commercially as of June 2021. Didi plans to launch new models of electric vehicles and increase the number of its custom-designed electric vehicles for its leasing network moving forward. The other major difference between Uber and Didi are their other business segments. For Uber, its other main businesses include food delivery through Uber Eats and its acquisition of Postmates, as well as Uber Freight. Meanwhile, Didi doesn't have a significant food delivery business, but the company has a wider variety of other initiatives. This includes bike sharing, auto solutions, freight, community group buying, financial services, and autonomous driving. Some of these initiatives help increase how often people use Didi's platform, while other initiatives have the potential to increase Didi's overall profitability. Starting with bike sharing, Didi is one of the largest bike sharing service providers in the world, with over 5.2 million bikes deployed over 220 cities while generating around $500 million in revenue in 2020. Didi's bike sharing service helps to attract more people to its main platform, with about 40% of customers who use bike sharing services at least once a month using Didi's ride hailing services at least once a month as well. In 2018, Didi launched Auto Solutions, which encourages drivers to join Didi's platform. Didi partners with leasing and financial services companies to help drivers obtain vehicles. Didi also helps to lower the operating costs for drivers and increase their earnings potential by providing drivers with access to fuel discounts and a network of maintenance and repair shops. In 2020, about 3 million drivers on Didi's platform used at least one auto solution service. Other initiatives included intracity freight and community group buying, which are both businesses that have significant growth potential. For community group buying, an e-commerce model that is rising in popularity in China, Didi is one of the major players in this area. It competes against other leading tech companies, including Meituan, Pinduoduo, Alibaba, and JD.com. Didi CEO has stated that the company's investment in community group buying would not be limited, and that the company would go all out to be the number one player in the market. Through its platform, Didi also provides a variety of financial services, including credit loans, wealth management, and payment solutions to better serve customers, drivers, and business partners within its ecosystem. Didi has formed a number of banking and insurance partnerships to provide these consumer financial services. This includes supporting credit card applications, offering installment purchase plans for cars, and selling financing, insurance, and lease-related products. Both Uber and Didi have emphasized the importance of autonomous driving for the future of ride-hailing. However, in 2020, Uber sold off its autonomous driving division, signaling a potential lack of progress and focus in the area. Meanwhile, Didi has continued its investment and development of its autonomous driving technology. Didi has stated that autonomous driving is the future of mobility. It has the potential to significantly improve safety while also improving vehicle utilization by allowing cars to operate throughout the day, therefore increasing supply and reducing the cost of transportation. Didi is developing level 4 autonomous driving technology and the operating system for an autonomous fleet with its team of over 500 members. The company operates a fleet of over 100 autonomous vehicles and also partners with other global automakers to test its autonomous driving hardware and software in their vehicles. If Didi's autonomous driving initiatives pan out, then this could help the company significantly reduce costs for its mobility operations. Moving on to the management team and investor base, Didi is well positioned with both. Didi is still led by its founder, Will Chen, who founded Didi in 2012 and is the CEO of the company. Meanwhile, Didi's president is Jean Liu, who previously worked in banking at Goldman Sachs, but later joined Didi as the COO in 2014. Didi's investor base is also filled with a number of prominent investors. SoftBank owns a 20.2% stake through its Vision Fund investment, Uber owns a 12% stake, and Tencent owns a 6.4% stake. Meanwhile, Will Chen owns a 6.5% stake, while Jean Liu owns a 1.6% stake. In addition to the main shareholders, Didi has a number of other notable investors, including Apple, Toyota, and Alibaba. Although Didi has a strong position in China's ride-hailing industry, the company faces a number of challenges moving forward. 
Because of Didi's high market share in ride hailing, the company has experienced additional regulatory oversight. This comes as regulators have increased their presence in China's internet sector in 2020 and 2021, with a notable example including the regulation of Alibaba's financial lending business. In June 2021, regulators announced that they were launching a probe to analyze potential unfairness regarding Didi's competitive practices and pricing methods. As seen with Alibaba, regulators will be swift to take action if necessary. In addition to regulation, another major challenge that Didi faces is how to classify the drivers on its platforms, whether that be gig workers or employees. Other ride-hailing companies, including Uber, have also faced the same challenge. If Didi has to reclassify its drivers from gig workers to employees, then this could have a number of major effects on its business. For example, gig workers or contractors don't receive the same level of benefits as employees, so reclassification could significantly increase costs for the company. As DD continues its global expansion, this could increase complications due to the different legal structures and expectations in each geographic region. So, could DD become the next Uber? While DD is the leader in China's mobility market, Didi will face major challenges competing in international markets with Uber and other competitors. In addition, Didi doesn't have a significant food delivery business relative to Uber. However, Didi has major potential in other initiatives including community group buying, autonomous driving, and digital finance, which could help diversify its revenue streams beyond mobility. To support its high stock valuation, Didi will need to demonstrate strong growth in its other initiatives as well as a road to profitability. If Didi can do this, then it has the potential to become more than the next Uber.